Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Stephen J. Cohen, and I'm doing a quick little video to introduce you all to a wonderful free piece of audio recording software um, that actually has been progressively adding features. It's called OSEN Audio, or OSEN Audio, uh, spelled like ocean, as you're seeing on my screen, if you forget the A. Uh, it's made by a Brazilian team at a university. And, um, you know, so it's not open source software, but it's free. And um, you can learn a lot about it from their website, but also from mine. If you go over to stephenjcohen.com, I've checked in on the development of this tool over a few years. Um, it has a lot of what you and I need as voice talent already built in and already configured. It runs on Mac. Windows and Linux, so it runs on just about any desktop computer you can imagine. The interface is very close to what some of you might think of as Twisted Wave, Twisted Wave's interface, um, Twisted Wave and uh, Ocean Audio, both sort of inherited this interface from a very old program some of you may remember called Cool Edit. So over at um, OsenAudio.com, you can learn some more about it. But what I'm here to show you is that this is a wonderful free tool that has built-in punch record or punch and roll functionality. So I'm going to show you the settings, give you a quick explanation of what I mean by punch and roll. And I'm doing this in one long take. So if there are flubs, there are flubs. I'm not cleaning this up. I just want to show you what happens. So you, you come here and you download it and it should automatically identify what platform you're on and you should pick whatever makes sense for you. You'll notice there's only one Mac executable, um, and that's because that all modern Macintoshes are 64-bit, while um, there are 32-bit and 64-bit versions of other operating systems. You can go through previous versions if you're running a very old Mac and you're running a 32-bit version to find it. It still will be incredibly stable. I've checked it out. Um, so that would be the one sort of catch that you'd find here. And you're seeing all the Linux versions and the Mac and Windows versions. If you're on Windows, you do want to make sure you get the one that works with your particular operating system. Um, you can just grab the general Windows installer, uh, which would be 32-bit. But I would advise if you're running 64-bit Windows to grab the 64-bit version because you want your audio software to be able to address all of the memory that's built into your machine. If you put the 32-bit version on a 64-bit machine, it will run, but it won't see all of the RAM you have available. That's why if you're running a 64-bit version, you want to make sure you get 64-bit software. If you're running the 32-bit version, the 64-bit version won't run on your machine. You can only choose the 32-bit version. Um, so that's something that I've sort of seen some people have an issue with from time to time, just with software in general, not with this particular piece of software. So now that I've established that I'm doing this on my Windows machine, not my Mac, let me show you the interface and show you how it works. And those of you who are uh, familiar, as I said before, with Twisted Wave will kind of recognize what I'm showing you here. Let me make this a little smaller. And you'll see that what I'm working with does bear a really big resemblance to Twisted Wave. So. Um, you can, there, there are some little tweaks you can do to the user interface, um, but they're not really important for functionality, but they're in, they're all in here and you can, you can make them work. What I want, want to show you is this is a very simple one track editor, just like Twisted Wave is, Twisted Wave being Mac only and this running on multiple operating systems. So for most voiceover work, really what you care about is one track. You've got one voice. You're going to record in mono and have one track. What we're going to do here is I'm going to come down into preferences and I'm going to go over to sound. And I'd like to show you these little settings and explain. So these three settings are the ones that you'll need if you want to use punch and roll, roll and punch, punch record, whichever way you want to call it. If you want to be able to use that recording method, then these are the ones you want to turn on. You want to move the cursor to record stop position. So this means that when I've done my recording, 
and I hit stop, it'll move the cursor to the end instead of leaving it where I was. Leaving it where I was, there are some advantages to that, but not for this particular recording method. We always wanted to go to where we finished. And this is going to seem counterintuitive to some of you. You want to turn on destructive record. At the end of this video, I'll show you what happens if you forget that one. Uh, we want to turn on destructive record because we want our new audio to replace the flub that we are recording over. For those of you who've never done punch and roll, this will be new. Um, uh, but for those of you who think destructive record, non-destructive record, why do I want to do that? I'll demonstrate why you want this setting. And then we have a pre-roll. Pre-roll is how much of the audio before the record point do I want to hear? Now, I want to hear something beforehand because I want to be able to match my dramatic intention for what I was recording. And it's, this is my one beef. I really wish this were uh, a window where I could type in exactly how long I'd like it to pre-roll. You see that I have choices on this menu, half a second, one second, two seconds, five seconds, 10 and 15. Um, so two seconds is fine for what I'm doing. And then just to show you what else we have here, um, typically audio projects are recorded at 44.1. Uh, video projects are typically recorded at 48. I'm recording at 44.1. Um, and there's some other settings that you could tweak and I'm, you know, I may show those to you in other videos or we can talk about them another place online. But for right now, this is all you need in order to create punch and roll. So uh, a piece of audio that I like to use whenever I don't have a <laughs> is, well, I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to hit record start recording, I'm going to make a mistake, and then I'm going to show you how I replace that mistake. Now sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny, um, uh, oh gosh. All right, so here's the audio that I've got, and I'm gonna play it back. Now sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny, um, uh, oh gosh. So I forgot my line and I was fine up until here. And when I forgot my line, I don't really like how the read went as I forgot it. So I'm not gonna try to punch in the word. I'm going to go back to where I feel like I lost my dramatic intention, which is here after that first line, because I felt like that first line was solid. Also, this is just a quick demo of the method. Um, so what you're going to hear now is you're going to hear the last two seconds to help me match dramatically where I was. And then it's going to start recording from this point and it's going to replace the audio. So let's see how that works. Tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three hour tour. All right, so that was punch and roll. What I did, and I'll play it back for you so you can get it. Now sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three hour tour. Now for those of you who've never seen punch and roll before, this is revolutionary. For those of you who have, um, you know, this is really simple. What I've done is I've recorded over the bad audio. I put my cursor back to the last place that I was absolutely happy with my performance. And that's something that you're going to hear people kind of argue about is where the best place to punch in is. I'm more on the dramatic end. Um, if I feel like the character was losing it, I'm going to go back and I'm going to record more because I care about my performance. The technical stuff should be the secondary layer. The artistic stuff should be the first layer. If not, I, I, I don't understand why you're doing the work. So I went back further than some people would have. I know people who actually would have tried to punch the word. Um, I would rather a more seamless edit at a natural stop. And I went back and did that. Now I'm going to undo this change so I can bring back my mistake. And when I do, it started from this tropic port aboard this tiny, um, 
So what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you what would have happened if I would have forgotten to do this destructive recording. All right, so now we're going to record again, but I'm going to forget to turn on destructive recording. And this is what will happen. Tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. So what you're seeing is that by turning off destructive recording, it inserted this. Let me play it back so you get a sense of what it actually did. Now sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. It started from this tropic port aboard this tiny, um, uh, oh God. Right, so with this audio, you don't know why you would ever want to do that. Let me show you a situation where you would. Um, the kind of situation where that doesn't turn up in audiobooks all that often, but it will turn up if you're doing oh, e-learning, anything else that's long form. Let's say you forgot a line. So I'm going to do something that simulates forgetting a line. Um, and I'm going to do an insert. And I can use this mode to do an insert. So I'm going to do a record again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Now I know my A, B, Cs. Next time, won't you play with me? And we go and take a quick look. And let me take off this long blank part in the beginning. And now I'm going to just show you how I could actually punch in a correction because I missed a line. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Now I know. All right, so obviously I need to punch in right about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record. Remember, destructive record is turned off. I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you play with me? All right. So by turning destructive record off, it's pushing the other audio further down the track. By doing that, it allows you to do replacements. So let's say you've gotten a list of corrections back. Let's go back and think about this as an audiobook for a moment. Where would this be useful in an audiobook? You've sent it off to your proofer. Your proofer comes back and says, oh, you said of instead of for in that line. Well, you could always find that entire line, cut the line out, and just insert your audio using the exact same method you just saw me use. So both of these modes are incredibly useful in this program. The program is free. It is not open source. Um, I've spoken, I actually interviewed the guys on this project a while ago. And uh, some of these features are things that I asked them for. I explained what I was using them for. And they said, wow, those are interesting. We'll put them on the queue. And it was earlier this year that these features came out as part of this wonderful piece of free software. So again, let me go back to the website for those of you who may not have caught that in the beginning. It's OSEN Audio, O-C-E-N-A-U-D-I-O dot com. And you'll see that you can choose to read the page in either Portuguese or English. Um, and because I'm looking at this on a Windows machine, you're seeing a Windows picture here. If I were looking at this on a Mac or under Linux, the, it would automatically sense that, set up the right download for me up front, and it would show the right picture. Um, if you'd like to talk some about this, this piece of software, you know, find me either at my website, stephenjcohen.com, bring that up for you or you can uh, contact me through the global voice acting academy at globalvoiceactingacademy.com um, you can find me there that way or you can click to work with me uh, at the global voice acting academy so that link will bring you through and it will load up the page where you can do that so i hope you find this useful and i hope you have a really good day and let's see. Bye now.